What's up everybody and welcome back to another course here at Push Start. So today we're going to be going over the individuals that you oh so desperately want to try to get into your gym. They're also the individuals that are probably already currently there. At least we're hoping these two groups match up. We're going to be talking about your client avatar. Now, avatar is this fancy word that we throw around when we are essentially wanting to, with extreme detail, characterize the people that we are trying to storytell, market, attract, convert, and then deliver our fitness service to. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into creating a client avatar. A lot of times we'll talk with the gym owner and they'll be like, oh, you know, 25 to 50 years old, you know, 50, 50 male, female, they are into fitness, they probably shop at Whole Foods and they like Lululemon. Well, you just gave us a very wide, well, albeit it might seem like that specific, a pretty wide range as to who that person is. And we're gonna talk today about some different things like demographics versus psychographics, which ones are more effective than others in creating a client avatar. And I'll give you a couple resources today of places that you can go to start pulling that information as it relates to the individuals you're looking to reach, convert, and hopefully deliver your fitness to. Let's get into it. Okay, so when we're talking about creating our client avatar, we have got to first define what a client avatar is. Pretty simple. A client avatar is the detailed profile of your ideal client. Now, to create a client avatar, we want to identify the following characteristics. And this is a lengthy list, and I'm gonna really help you kind of hone in on which ones are most important for you, especially if you've never done this before and you're looking to get started with refining your client avatar. Demographics. So think of things that the U.S. Census, for those of us here in the States, would grab. That'd be age, household income, education level, you know, gender, I mean, or sex, however that's looked at. Um, it, those are the things that will pretty much come to us from demographics, okay? You know, zip codes, uh, how many people per household, all that stuff. Now, while that's helpful information, it doesn't really tell us a lot about what the individual wants. What are their values? What do they need? That's when we get into psychographics. Psychographics are gonna help us better understand the psychology of these individuals. What do they resonate with, right? What's gonna you know, trigger them into thinking or making an emotional decision about fitness? How are we gonna reach them? On what channels? Do they read the newspaper? Are they on social media? Is it more of an email newsletter type individual? Based on their age, you can think about how a digital connection point would change with someone who's in their early 20s versus mid 30s versus late 50s. Those things would be psychographics. And then we get into things like lifestyle, wants, needs, and pain points. So lifestyle is essentially how the individual lives their life. For those of you maybe on the west coast of the country, you have members who during the summertime and spring are gone. They're not in the gym. Why? Because they're out mountain biking and hiking and canoeing and doing all the things that, you know, Denver and Montana and Colorado, like all those great outdoorsy things that are available out there. You have to understand the lifestyle. What do they value? They probably value being able to stand up paddleboard down the river with their you know, golden retriever for two hours without getting tired. Versus maybe let's go far east coast. Let's go New York City. What would someone there value? They value maybe finding a tight knit community in a huge city like New York City. People are constantly looking for their own smaller tribes. They're trying to you know, reduce down the feeling of being one of nine million in New York City to being one of a couple hundred, maybe at a, in a micro gym or a boutique fitness facility. So we have to understand the lifestyle, the wants, needs, and pain points of these individuals. Are these individuals seeking fitness to avoid medical melee? Or are they seeking fitness for aesthetic goals? These are all things we have to understand and bake into our client avatar. You'll get brand associations and then preferred information channels. These are essentially what other brands do they purchase from? What other brands do they trust? Does your brand fit within that? If someone likes to shop at Lululemon and they like to buy groceries from Whole Foods and then I insert your brand, does that fit? Would that fit within their brand association and buying profile? 
And then finally, preferred information channels, like I mentioned earlier, where are they getting their information from? Is it gonna be word of mouth versus social media? Are they on TikTok or Facebook? Do they do more email marketing? All these things need to go into your client avatar. Now, where do we get this information? Okay, well, first off, you already have it. You have your customers in front of you. These are people who walked in, were thinking about joining, and then due to some magical sales magic or client experience magic of you and your staff, they actually gave you money and joined. So they are the perfect subset and data point of people we should be trying to reach. Now, while your member management software within PushPress probably has a lot of good demographic information, it has probably their geographical location, their age, it might have their gender and sex, it'll give you a good snapshot, but you have these people live in front of you. I highly recommend putting together surveys or even focus groups to learn more about them at that psychographic level, at that needs, wants, and pain points level, at that lifestyle level. A focus group is simply getting together 15, 20% of your clients, so your overall client population, and get together 15 to 20%, split them up, maybe 51, 49, you know, in each gender, and go ahead and ask them. Ask them the questions that you don't know. As, we, as I went through that list, if there's anything like, yeah, I don't really know what their pain points are. I don't know where they shop. I'm not exactly sure what their information channels are. You could get them together and simply explain, guys, I love you. You are like my ideal clients. I would love more of you. But I, in order to do that, I need to find out more about you. And just have a simple focus group. Come in there with you know, a list of different questions based on the list I gave you previously and ask them. Take down their information, probably record the whole session so you can go, you know, go back on it later, and you can learn a ton about your avatar client simply by talking to those customers you already have. Surveys are another one you could send out, make it real simple, ask all the questions in the survey. It's just sometimes a little bit harder to get people to fill those out. You can probably pull together some small good focus groups at a local coffee shop or the brewery on a weekend because your community is tribal and they are tight knit and probably get just as good at data points. Demographic information resources. So you have statisticalatlas.com, which is a great one. And then you have obviously the census. So the US Census Bureau reports all this data. It is public knowledge. So if you've ever got a census report or someone that came around to your home asking census-based questions, all that information gets aggregated, put into a document, and then published, and you can access it all right there. Now, digital traffic analysis. This is where getting into your Google Search Console. If you've never, you're not even sure what that is, go ahead and put in Google Search Console, and you'll click on it, and it'll ask you to log in. You'll log in with the Gmail address, I'm assuming you're using Gmail, in which maybe you've created your uh, uh, business email address. So if you've used Google Workplace for your GBL, your Google business listing, and your Google business address, and you use Gmail for the email in and out, you will have a Google Search Console. And that will allow you to see all the different traffic of people coming to your site. It will give you very interesting data and information about them. Where did they come from? Did they come from Facebook? What's the click-through rate, right? Male, female, what part of the country, what part of the state? It'll give you a lot of information that you can use to help formulate a client avatar. And then social media insights, another great tool to understand basic demographic information, you know, uh, age, gender, part of the world, you know, did they find you through your content or did they find you through the explore page? This is just more information that is readily available and for free at your fingertips to have, to have you better understand who people are how will they find you? And then what low-hanging fruit information can we grab from there to start putting together our client avatar? Now, going back to demographics, we talked about it briefly, but I wanna go in a little bit more in depth. Demographics is the study of people's characteristics. Now, for the purposes of creating your client avatar, we're going to identify the following demographic information, okay? So there's a lot of demographic information you could pull from. I want you to focus on this. Age and create ranges just like I laid out here, gender, income, and location. 
okay? And that income could be looked at as HH household income. You might look at it in census data as AGI, adjusted gross income. It really doesn't matter which version of that you use as long as you're just consistent with it every time you go to update your client avatar. If you focus on those four pieces of demographic information, you will have pretty much most of what you need to go ahead and create your client avatar profile. Now let's get into psychographics. Psychographics are the study of people's beliefs, values, and goals. This gets into why do they do the things they do? What kind of messaging would resonate with them? Are the core values of my business aligning with theirs? Now, this would be something like if we looked at personality, values, and then activities, I think that's an ample amount enough data that would allow you to you know, combine that with the demographics to create a pretty much almost complete client avatar. So let's start with personality. Now think of the different personalities of the people you have in your gym. They probably vary. Do these individuals prefer a hands-on coach, right? Someone who's very tactile, visual, and verbal cueing them, or do they want someone more, in the, they want some more independence? They just want someone to kind of give them a cue and let them do their thing. What kind of clients do you have? Now if you have the more hands-on approach clients, well then maybe your social media and a lot of the language you use in your content and copy should talk about how you take a hands-on approach. Vice versa, if you have more of like, you know, we're not all gonna overcoach you, these people are maybe they're previously athletic or they're, they have a fitness training age that's high enough and a fitness IQ, they don't need you babying them throughout the workout, well, probably we should be talking in that manner to attract more of those type of people. Values. Why is paying for a gym membership a priority for you? Such a great question to ask in those focus groups to understand the values that those individuals have. They may value their health. I'm 48 and my father died of a heart attack at 56. That's less than 10 years away. I wanna make sure that doesn't happen to me. Very good, that's great, take it down. And if you see that as a overwhelming majority consensus, now you know that is probably one of the values of your avatar uh, profile. Now let's say it's, I'm 27 years old, I used to play sports, I gained a little, you know, some weight since I graduated college and I wanna get back in, you know, you know, bringing sexy back type scenario, right? I'm young, I'm single, looking to mingle. Okay, great, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But we need to understand if that's a part of our client avatars of values. And activities, what do you do outside the gym? Right? Fitness is gonna be a hobby for 99.9% .9 of human beings who ever participate in it. It is not how they make their money. So it's a hobby, just like dancing, or going to restaurants, or uh, going to breweries, or going to the park, or going, white, you know, going uh, uh, hiking and uh, zip lining. Like any, these are just fun recreational hobbies and activities. So, but what do they do when they're not at the gym? That's just one of their hobbies, right? Paint me the rest of the picture. Are they you know, watching the football game on Sundays? Do they volunteer at church? Do they have another job or maybe even a third job? What kind of individuals do we have in our gym based on the things they do when they're not with us? Now, lifestyle. Understanding how your client avatar lives their life is vital if you want to successfully market to them. Are we talking about the biblical South, right? The Bible Belt? And we have to have a certain kind of language and maybe tone to our voice when we speak to them and our copywriting and our website versus maybe a more northern demographic, right? Or maybe over in California. You got to imagine people in different parts of the country, even different parts of your city might talk, act, think differently. So who are you pulling from? Now do they, uh, here are a couple of things that I think are very important when you're doing this, maybe in focus groups or surveys, relationship status, single, Married, divorced, widowed? Are they, again, single and looking to mingle? Are they married once, married twice? Are they, you know, their kids are 18 and, you know, grown and out of the house? Where are they at? Do they rent their own home? I'm sorry, do they rent or own their own home? This is the difference between a lease and a mortgage. What kind of client has a lease? Probably someone a little bit more less established in life, or maybe for financial reasons, uh, they just chose not to put their money in a down payment, whatever. But by and large, you won't know unless you ask. Do we have, and I always ask people this about their clients, like mortgages or leases? Like, oh, I'm not really sure. Well, that's a different story. Which one is a higher flight risk at your gym? A lease or a mortgage? Probably the lease. The lease ends in 12 months. 
Mortgages though, not so much. Now, of course, they always sell their house and move, but it gives you a little better idea as to the stability and the LOM, the length of membership that individual might have with your gym. Financially frugal. Now, do they make coffee at home or they go out for craft coffee, right? If they're willing to come and give you $200 a month for group fitness, then maybe, maybe they're also willing to go ahead and purchase the finer things in life. Or is this an individual that literally has to work a second job to afford those finer things? And this is a luxury for them that's essentially, you know, um, outside of their pay grade, but they're working really hard at their fitness. It means a lot and they're willing to make that sacrifice. Imagine the copywriting and the kind of content you could create if you had a lot of those individuals in your gym. Travel and experience focused. What's their social profile? Are they partying at home? Or do they like to stay at home with the kids and go to T-ball on Saturdays? These are all things that you could ask your clients when you're doing those focus groups. Now their wants, needs, and pain points are probably something you're more familiar with since you've gone through some type of a sales process with them. You probably had to understand these in order to close them on your membership anyway. Now, in order to offer a successful client experience, we need to be aware of their previous experiences and future desires. Some people have no experience in fitness, others vast. Some people have no idea what to expect, what kind of goals should they want, what is possible. Others know exactly where they wanna go because maybe they were there previously, they just kind of fell off. We need to know these things. So I like to start with wants. You know, I want a workout that gives me enough cardio and strength so that I don't have to do extra on my own. Well, you would only know that from a client from talking to them. What is it you want out of a fitness program? And again, if you got to talk to 15 to 20 plus percent of your members to gather this information, you'd probably find a general consensus as to what they want in a fitness program and a gym that they're willing to spend money at. Needs, I have to work out at lunch and need an on-site shower. This is all very, inf very informational stuff. When I work with metropolitan gyms in downtown urban areas, and they're like, man, you know, we open up a noon class and all of a sudden, our membership exploded. I'm like, well, that makes sense. It's, a, it's an urban area. There's people that probably work around the corner. You know, and it's like, yeah, our showers were never used before. I'm like you don't say, but now they are crazy, right? Because they weren't thinking about the, where they were located and who their avatar client would be. If you were downtown, right next to Bank of America, that has 20,000 employees in the building, well, Maybe an uptown working business individual or professional who wants to squeeze in a quick workout in between meetings might be part of your client avatar profile. Pain points. I, am, I hate feeling like I don't know the exercises in a new group class. I don't like people thinking that I'm the new person. This is one of the number one reasons people do not show up to try out group fitness. It's in a group, there's social pressure, and they don't want to look silly like because they don't know the names of the movements. Right? I, I always position this to gym owners and trainers and coaches who might not be familiar with this phenomenon. But one of the reasons business probably isn't where you want it to be is because not enough people walk in the door and one of the number one reasons not enough people walk in the door is intimidation, unfamiliarity, and their reserve thinking that they might be judged for being new at this thing. So if that's one of their pain points, how can we go ahead and market to that through our social media and website. Now the brand association preferred information channels that we talked about. This is very interesting. I had a gym owner reach out to me and he was really concerned as to why he had not been successful when he had raised prices at his gym. He had a large amount of people cancel. He had a very hard time selling individuals. And what we realized looking around was he was in a market that liked to shop at thrift stores and really enjoyed, you know, you know, Kmart blue light specials. And it just, it was not a market that had an overwhelming majority of people willing to pay a premium price that he was charging. So we didn't lower our price. We just had to go after the 10 to 20% of people that lived in that neighborhood that did have that type of buying persona. So we had to find what are the most elevated brands in the area. How are they marketing the people? How do we associate ourselves with that brand? How do we make our brand look as sophisticated as that brand? Now, this is something that's very interesting. It also gives you a great opportunity for you to do business to business, B2B collabs with local brands in your market. If you found out that 45% of all your customers love this one craft coffee spot down the street, 
and you know of them. You might have even you know, purchased coffee from them before. But like, man, 45, that's almost half. And you haven't really thought about how we were going to align ourselves with a brand like that. How maybe do we partner with them, collab with them? What do they know about their customer profile? If they shop and buy coffee there, very expensive craft coffee, man, it makes sense now why they shop at our gym that is maybe of a premium price. Or maybe you're not currently a premium price and understanding your client avatar better. Oh my God, they all wear $165 Lululemon leggings and they buy $6 you know, uh, almond milk lattes? And I'm sitting over here concerned about charging $115 a month? Doesn't make a lot of sense, but now that you understand your client avatar better, you can make moves within the business. This is not just about who do we market to. And the information channels, you need to have an idea as to where are our avatar clients getting their information. Podcast, TikTok, YouTube, you know, with newspapers, like where are they getting it from? If you don't know, how will we put our information out in the right channels? I hope you guys have enjoyed this course. Creating a client avatar is certainly not easy, and there's probably a ton of other questions you have after going through this. Please reach out to us inside of the Push Press Community Facebook group. Myself and the rest of the Push Press team are there to help answer your questions. And until I see you in the next course here at Push Start, have a great day.